It's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD and Cosmetic Science Nerd. The other day I came across this video from 5 Minute Magic called 25 Things About Cosmetics You Never Know. Never knew? It talks about things you never know about cosmetics and when I was watching it the explanations were kind of off. So I thought I'd give an explanation based on actual science about why these things are happening. If you like nerding out about beauty, make sure you click the like, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Okay, so let's get started. Alright, so first of all, fruit is not human skin. They do a lot of stuff on fruit and while it looks cool, it just isn't really the same. So firstly, the stuff you're cleaning out of pores with pore strips is not dirt. It is mostly dead skin cells and oil, which has slowly started oxidizing, which is why it starts looking dark. Sometimes these are called sebaceous filaments, but they don't really have a proper technical name. These can turn into blackheads if they solidify and clog up your pores, but using pore cleansing strips isn't a very effective way of getting rid of them, because they'll just fill up again really quickly. Pore strips probably aren't as bad as a lot of people make them out to be, but they're not a very effective way of dealing with these. It's much more effective to use a leave-on product to keep your pores clear, rather than going in and evicting them forcibly after they're there. Some good ingredients for this are salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide. I want to know what makeup remover oil they're using because that is awful. I've never had a makeup remover oil not at least smudge my makeup. There's a lot of variation in what's in a makeup remover oil, but in general oils dissolve oils because they're both non-polar. So I'm actually quite surprised that this happened. So either the makeup remover oil is absolutely terrible, which I think is probably the case, or it's simply the fact that fruit is not human skin. I'm not really sure what they're trying to show here. Foundations are emulsions and the outer phase is often called the base. So if you have something watery on the outside then it's going to dissolve well in water because water mixes with water. With the oil base one it's going to repel the water and so it doesn't mix as well so that's what we're seeing here. Okay I have no idea how that is the logical conclusion of that experiment. I'm not sure how that shows that it's clogging pores. So things that are oily aren't always comedogenic. So for example, mineral oil and petrolatum, they are not very comedogenic. And I feel like I probably don't need to tell you if you've been watching my channel, but skin doesn't need to breathe and makeup doesn't stop skin from breathing. <laughs> is actually the lower layer of the skin. On my skin model it is this section. It doesn't lose its moisture very easily, it is part of your flesh. It is about 70% water. The bit that does lose moisture is usually the stratum corneum which is the top layers of the epidermis which is all the way up the top up here. When an apple goes brown, it is not losing its moisture. What's happening is that it's a reaction between enzymes in the fruit and oxygen in the air. I think that they're using a really thick ass layer of Vaseline here. It is much thicker than you would ever apply to your skin. They are correct in saying that Vaseline is good at sealing in moisture. It is the best occlusive amongst all our common skincare ingredients. Mm. 
what? Okay, so vitamins A, G, E, and K, they are good for your skin. They are oil-soluble vitamins. Vitamin A especially is where we get our retinoids from. But vitamins have nothing to do with cleansing your skin, and it has nothing to do with why these apricots are plumping up. Out of the different oils, olive oil is somewhat polar, which means it prefers water compared to baby oil, which I think is why it's going into the water-based apricot. A lot of the time when you're seeing these rehydration demonstrations, what's happening is water is going back into the fruit. And so I think that's why the olive oil is doing this after four hours, but not the other oils. I have no idea what the cosmetic oil is. I assume it's going to be something that's quite non-polar, possibly mineral oil, which is what baby oil is. I guarantee you, if you mix a tiny amount of these four vitamins into the baby oil, it will not plump up your apricot. I don't know why you're trying to plump up apricots in the first place, but if you do, I will eat a plumped up apricot if that happens. All right, so shampoos contain surfactants, which help dirt dissolve. Unfortunately, they can also help dye dissolve, which is why in both of the versions with shampoo, there is some dye coming out. Eggs do contain a tiny amount of surfactant, but compared to the shampoo, it is not cleaning dirt off. So really what this is showing is that eggs are not good shampoo. This is just a collection of demonstrations with statements after them that has nothing to do with the demonstration. So hair products don't all just work by absorbing oil. Dry shampoo absorbs oil, and I think that's about it. Conditioners coat your hair, hairspray solidifies on your hair so that it stays in place, and I think that's what this is showing. The scissors are scraping off some accumulated product on the hair, probably also snapping off a whole bunch of cuticle, which is not great. Fun fact, your cuticle is actually transparent, so if you scrape off cuticle, it's going to look transparent like it does there. It won't be the color of your hair. Just don't scrape your hair like that. That's not good for your hair. They need better waterproof eyeliner. I have sweated through some of my waterproof eyeliners. I have done intense exercise for hours and it has not budged. So makeup fixing sprays do work by putting on a waterproof film over your face that holds your makeup in place, which is similar to what the hairspray is doing here. The difference between a hairspray and a makeup fixing spray is that usually makeup fixing sprays are designed to be a bit more flexible so that it's less uncomfortable. It doesn't feel like you have a film on your face. That is a pretty unrealistic amount of spray. Maybe you'd use this if you're going under some hot lights, if you're doing some theater performances, but I think for everyday life, it's probably not going to be that nice if you want to learn more about how makeup setting sprays work, I have a video on this, I'll link it in the description. This is actually a really nice demonstration. The brown paper test is a legitimate test for lipids, which includes oils. There is a lot of variation in different foundation formulas, but in general, for dry skin, they do tend to put more oil in to replace the oil that's missing from your skin.
Okay, this is not a great idea. Pigments that are safe for your eyes are not the same pigments that are safe for your lips. And the reason is we do tend to eat some of the pigments that we place on our lips. Your eyes are not good at absorbing products that you put on them. Most of the time, things are flowing out of your eyes rather than into your eyes, but your mouth is made for eating things. So there are some pigments that are okay for your eyes that are banned for products on your lips. An interesting fact is that the Egyptians used to use lots of heavy metal pigments on their eyes and that wasn't actually why they got heavy metal poisoning from eye makeup. It was actually because they would lick the brush that they used and then apply the pigment to their eyes. So any remaining pigment on the brush would end up eaten. I just got one thing on my mind. Baby, one day I'm hoping that you will be mine Turn my life around, wow yeah. Where do we go when everything feels like So this is sort of a legitimate DIY version of what's actually in your eye makeup products. Carbon black is a pigment that you find a lot when you have a black product. And you can make it from burning organic matter like the tip of a banana. I don't know why they picked a banana. They could have burnt anything. Carbon black can be an inhalation risk though, but I think in terms of safety, this is probably not as significant a risk as things that you would encounter in everyday life anyway, like being around a campfire or burning your food or burning a candle. I do think it is a bit of a pain though. It does seem a lot easier to just buy a $2 eyeliner. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, don't do it. Okay, that's not as bad as I expected. I have seen recommendations for the worst things to put into mascaras. Spit, do not put spit in. Contact lens solution, don't put it in. A lot of people assume that because contact lens solution has a preservative, then it's fine to add it to something like mascara. The problem is when you're mixing stuff into it, it changes what your system is. And so your preservative might not stand up to that anymore. Probably doesn't stand up to that anymore. Contact lens solution is designed to be dropped out of a container. It's not designed to have a dirty brush go in and out covered in mascara. And so the preservatives might not work as well. Probably won't work as well. Water also not that great. It doesn't have preservatives. Oil would probably be a much better choice than any of those other ones. Still pretty risky though. I wouldn't recommend this. Maybe if you used it and then immediately used the mascara and then chucked the mascara out, it might be reasonably safe. I wouldn't keep it there. One of the scariest things about eye makeup is that if it's not preserved properly, you can get these really, really awful infections, which were quite common before preservatives were a big thing in makeup. If you have a strong stomach, you can look up Pseudomonas corneal ulcers. They are gross. That was an experience. I feel like they have to know how awful their videos are. It's impossible to make this sort of video all day and not just have some sort of awareness about this. I think it's clickbait or comment bait because it's just so obviously bad. Did you enjoy this video? Let me know in the comments if you want me to do more videos like this. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Lab Muffin Beauty Science on Instagram and check out my blog for more beauty science. See you next time to nerd out more about beauty.